brothers and my sisters Only they can understand Fight this war together Together we will stand Hey everybody, it's Joe and thanks for tuning in to TVO Campfire. What this show's about is about successful veterans and they're bringing you the stories and their experiences. And we hope that it can provide inspiration to each of you out there, or maybe a veteran that you know to help in their life. Welcome to At TVO Campfire. We are delighted to have you with us today. We have a absolutely great show for you. We are going to share with you a retired Army veteran who is an aviation operations specialist serving a nine-month tour in Afghanistan and a three-year tour in Germany. She earned her master's degree in business administration and a bachelor's in organizational studies. She's also been an executive director of a chamber of commerce and small business development center in California. Super exciting. She's lost several, unfortunately, aircraft, aircrafts of battle buddies and has suffered with PTSD and survived a near fatal accident resulting in a TBI, a traumatic brain injury. Through her recovery though, she has founded a virtual meetup group called She Vets It. And this was established in 2017 to build a community of women veterans from each branch of the service so that they could connect, converse, and inspire one another. We'd like to welcome to our show and to you, Althea D. Williams. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca and Joe, for having me. I really appreciate you and your staff, um, the staff at the Veterans Outdoor Television Show. I appreciate what you both are doing and everyone that works behind the scene, just capturing and archiving the experiences of veterans. A lot of our, our stories are not being told. So I do want to just thank you for just having me here today. We love it. We're glad to have you here and hear your story. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm trying to think where should I start? As you know, my name is Althea Williams. Um, I'm a mother of five. My oldest is 30 years old, believe it or not. And my youngest is 16. And then in between, you can fill in the gaps. But because <laughs> if I have to start thinking about the, the, the ages, I'm like, okay. But anyhow, I have a granddaughter. Her name is Riley. And she is, she'll be five in May. And they're actually in Georgia. My, it's for my oldest son. So I'm excited. Hopefully, I get a chance to see her in a couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm also uh, a, a combat veteran, as you know, um, Army veteran um, at that, as you uh, shared before, I'm a PTSD and TBI survivor. So um, every day I'm, you know, learning more to how to be in that space and survive in that space. So um, that leads me into sharing that I am the, the founder of She Vets It. And that actually has been something that has helped me uh, build a community of women that come together to have each other's back. Because a lot of times being in the military, we, um, we understand um, mental health probably more than a, a lot of our uh, families from time to time, because as civilians, you don't, you don't really have to address those things as much as when you're, um, you know, a veteran. So I like to uh, like bringing people together so that if we have to talk about those things, breaking the stigma behind mental health, that we have a safe space for us to come together. And so that's what's helped me survive is just having those connections. And that's why I do what I do. Well, I, I tell you what, that's amazing. It's phenomenal. And as soon as we have had our initial discussion with you on Clubhouse, it was like, yeah, this is going to be great. Let's let's get her on. 
let's let the world see what we got to see just in that little room along with the, you know, the, I don't know, the 30 something of us that were in there that night. Congratulations. One on being a survivor of both of those areas with the TBI and the PTSD. And not only are you survivor of it, but you're sitting there and continuously day in and day in out, still, still dealing with it and helping others to deal with it. And, and to me, that's tremendous. I, think I, I appreciate it. And I want to know, I know you're in Dallas now, but where were you born and what did you do as a little rug rat growing up? Oh my goodness. Um, I'm, I was born in Michigan, but um, at the age of two, I moved to um, California and my uncle, actually, when we transitioned and moved to California, my mom's parents and everyone was in Michigan. My mom and dad had divorced when I was like two. So we moved to my uncle. Well, my uncle was in the military. So I was always, he was like just someone I looked up to. And so, but I never thought I was going to join necessarily younger, but I, I love singing. Uh, for some reason, singing kind of like just, uh, I don't know, it was just so therapeutic growing up. Um, I love sports, uh, volleyball, track and field, you name it. Uh, but I, I'm just trying to think, I was really, oh my gosh, what kind of child was I? I was just uh, outgoing, always always have friends like I always had just friends and even today people always tell me Althea you know everybody <laughs> and but even to the point where I used to get shame for knowing people they're like okay you know way too many people if we go to the store we're gonna go in and get out because I know you're gonna run into somebody or this like if you go to Utah I know we're gonna run into somebody you know so then that made me think you know what this is it, it kind of leads to what I'm doing now because I love connecting people. And then in, in California, before I joined the military, before my midlife crisis and joined the military at 39, <laughs> I was almost 39. So I'm not your typical veteran who joined straight out of high school. Uh, I lived with my uncle when we transitioned from Michigan to uh, California and he was in the military. So I really, really looked up to him and it always stuck in my mind that I want to, you know, I think I want to join the military. And he was in the, the army reserve and he was an officer and he actually retired when I joined, when I joined at the age of 39, I was, uh, I was about like a month or two before I uh, was turning 39, I joined. So I'm not your typical veteran that joined straight out of high school. So, but I always knew I wanted to do it out of high school because I was gonna sign up, but then something happened and it changed the direction and I decided to go to college. And so then I was gonna do ROTC, but then I actually end up getting a job uh, offer for the, the Chamber of Commerce. And so I said, hmm, join the military or take the opportunity to run a chamber of commerce. I did that. So that, so growing up kind of led me up to this point, like I said, with my uncle being in the military. Like I said, I always love working with people, uh, always had a lot of friends. So I always wanted to connect people. And with my chamber of commerce experience, I just love bringing peace, people together and connecting people. That's really exciting. And then from there, you're on to moving and serving other people by enlisting in the army. And so did you initially go into aviation or did you have a different MLS when you first went in? Initially, oh, actually, yes. Uh, I initially joined as an aviation operations specialist. And because I had the the MBA, which is business administration, I thought that would be a good uh, fit for me because it would be, give me the experience of aviation operations. So yes, aviation operation was my initial job 
but they it led me into doing 42 alpha work which is human resource so was that a welcome transition for you like you you know you're like hey i'm gonna get to do aviation and then you get in there and they're like yeah we want you to do something else Yes, I think as soon as the first sergeant and the commander found out I had an MBA, every unit I went to, they'll pull me. And and all the other 15 pop was like, wait, she's supposed to be with us. And they're like, mm -mm, we need her up here with us. So I in, always ended up in brigade or HHC brigade. Um, my initial duty station was uh, uh, third ID, which was with which is third combat aviation uh, brigade. So what ended up being the point to where you're like, okay, you know, I've, I've had enough. I'm ready to get out and go focus on the next chapter in my life. Wow. Um, so what happened was I had, I had my own idea of what I was going to do joining the military and how I was going to get out, but God had other plans. So I didn't share earlier that before I joined, uh, I joined because there was a recession that happened and I was working with the city of Dallas and there was a layoff. And when the layoff happened, uh, a lot of us had to make choices and I always wanted to join the military. And I said, oh my goodness. And I ran into this gentleman, I was in a coffee shop and we were just small talking and he was in the military and he was like, you should consider joining the military. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I always wanted to join. So I just said, you know what? I'm gonna to go to the recruiters um, and find out information. I went there, but then I didn't just decide I was gonna join. Uh, I said, okay, I'm gonna pray about it. Okay, God, if this is something you want me to do, let me know. So I went to church that Sunday. I went to church before I decided I was gonna sign my name on the dotted line. What happened is I went to church and the pastor, it's not a military town. He always, always, he never talk about military. But this particular day, there was a Navy SEAL chaplain that showed up to speak. He was our guest speaker. Everything on the stage was military thing. The teleprompter and everything was military. And I was like, in his message, I'm telling you, if it wasn't clear that I needed to join the military, I there's no other message that I needed. So I ended up joining. And so from there, um, from there, like I said, I ended up joining the military. And then I ended up going, once I got in, um, maybe five years into it, I ended up getting uh, into an accident. And I ended up experiencing a traumatic brain injury in Germany. Well, I didn't know initially that I had the traumatic brain injury, but I knew something was going on because I was losing things. I, I actually got lost. I went to a doctor's appointment and I ended up uh, supposed to be home by afternoon. And I, uh, I didn't get home till the next morning. I got confused. It, no one could tell me what was going on. My doctor just said, oh, it's just PTSD. And I said, okay, I know what the PTSD is doing to me, but what's happening after this accident, something's different going on. So then I think uh, maybe some months later, I end up on my way to work and I ended up losing consciousness um, in route. And I was seeing double and lost conscious. And, but this particular day, I wasn't driving. I was just a passenger. And then I had to go straight to, I guess they took me to um, base, but they're like, no, she needs to go to the hospital. So they sent me, I was in, actually ended up in a stroke unit for a week in Germany. And oof, I'm trying not to get teary eyed, but um, I couldn't remember people. Um, there was a lot of things going on. And then I ended up, um, I just couldn't remember people that I went in the military with. They would, uh, people uh, come to me and like, hey, Althea, how are you? I haven't seen you in a long time. And I'm like thinking, who are they? So then the joke in the office became was, no matter who comes up to me, I'm going to just be excited. <laughs> I was going to be like, how's your mom and them? How, how's your husband? Oh, you're not married. 
you know, I knew that. <laughs> so, but anyhow, it, although I'm saying it now, but at that time, it was really a dark time because I didn't really know what was going on. So then I ended up going to getting transferred to uh, DC and end up getting treatment and brain therapy at Walter Reed. They realized that I had a traumatic brain injury. And so as a result, I ended up getting out of the mil medically retiring out the military. It wasn't what I planned, but go. That's that's what I wanted to ask you about is if they had sent you to Bethesda or, and you were getting treatment there mm -hmm. and we haven't had anybody on the show really talk about what it's like being there. And so okay. maybe you could tell us a little bit about how veterans are cared for, because this is sort of the central, no matter which branch of service, if you've had a significant injury, that's where you're going to be treated. Yeah. And so I know it's probably really difficult for you to share, but at least give us a little idea because this is where the transitioning for people who've had an injury begin. They go to Bethesda and then they sometimes don't get to go through the transition assistance program through the military. And then off they go right into the civilian world. Yes. And how do they connect with the Veterans Administration from that point? So if you could share a little bit about your time there, we okay. would love to hear about that. Yes, definitely. I would love to share. Yes. So they transferred me to a warrior transition unit at Fort Belvoir. And that's where they, where I was at a unit where I would report. And mostly I had a nurse case manager. I had an NCO. I did meet for formation, had to check in every day to let them know that I'm okay. And my place of duty was my medical appointments. That, that's it. There's no work or anything. So I was there for two years and, and they took really good care of me. I know we hear a lot of stories, horrible stories where people don't feel like the military have, have been good to them, but I'm going to say that my experience have been different. They really took care of me. My NCOs, uh, my NCOs at the Warrior Transition Unit, they were on top of me with all my medical concerns. If there was a need, they made sure that I actually uh, was, was, was taken care of. I, I got shuttled to my appointments from Fort Belvoir to Bethesda. The doctors were wonderful. Um, I'm so grateful too is because I didn't realize just how much I was going through as far as the PTSD and how it impacts you physically and how PTSD and TBI, they're so com um, similar, the symptoms are so similar, but sometimes when you have a TBI, it exacerbates the, the PTSD symptoms. So, so along with going to Bethesda for the, the TBI, I had to do counseling. And so I did a lot of counseling there just to work through some of those things, experiences of losing people in combat and just, you know, other things. And then uh, going to brain therapy, that kind of helped me get off this roller coaster where my life felt like I was just on this roller coaster that was just spinning out of control. And so I'm just very grateful that I'm in the space that I am now. I'm not healed. <laughs> Every day is a challenge, but it's not the same challenge that I initially had when I didn't know how PTSD impacts my life. I didn't know how my TBI symptoms of not having enough sleep are stress. And, and with the therapy, um, it was helping me by knowing, okay, I need to set boundaries because I got to be in the most healthiest uh, environment so that my TBI symptoms and PTSD does not challenge me to where I can't function. So that has definitely been helped. Like I said, the staff at Bethesda, the staff at Fort Belvoir was wonderful. And for those vets that watch this show as well as the civilian side of the house too and they have people that are in that process right now that you went through 
What's some of the best advice that you can give to those people that are going through that right now? Yes, I, I definitely can add to that. I would say if I knew what I knew today is be your best advocate. Uh, when I was going through, uh, I would just take the doctor's word for, okay, he's an expert. I would take his word for whatever. But at the same time, we know our body we know what's going on because it took me almost a year for them to figure out that it was a TBI because I didn't advocate for myself like I should have. When he thought it was just the PTSD, I should have been like, no, this is this is something different. I need to see if I needed to be more assertive about my my health and be my best advocate. And I would say it probably, I probably would have received treatment before I was unconscious. So I would say, be your best, be your best advocate, speak right down everything that you're going through so that you're able to communicate those things when you're not in the doctor's office and you're having certain symptoms, write those symptoms down. And when you get to the doctor's office, share, hey, I've had 20 migraines, you know, uh, or, uh, you know, within the last month, or I've, you know, when I wake up, my head is either throbbing or it's pulsating, or whatever those things is, look for those descriptive words that you know that you're experiencing, because that gives them a better idea of what's going on. But if you go in there, and you're like, well, yeah, I'm just, I'm not feeling good. Okay, that doesn't mean, you know, for them, they're like, okay, what does that mean? So you need to be an advocate. If you're experiencing something, uh, write it down. Be descriptive about what it is that you, when you're in the moment and it happens, write it down because that's the moment you'll realize, okay, it was throbbing. It wasn't pulsating. It was, you know, and then, and take a tally of how many times it's happening. So journalize it. I would say that journal and be the, your, your best advocate and I would say, and find people that you can communicate what you're going through so that you're not commu so that you're not doing it alone. And that's the reason why I started She Vets It, because I knew that women veterans, the ones that I were, was meeting at Fort Belvoir, we got it. Like we like we understood, we understood each other. I didn't have to explain much. And I knew I had really great friends that were civilian, but they didn't understand the struggles that, the common struggles that veterans go through from day to day. It's it's very common for me to run into a woman veteran that may have experienced a TBI or PTSD. So I would say connect with your veteran community and or connect with someone that can really share, um, you can kind of share what you're going through and vice versa. That's, that's phenomenal. I mean, I, I can't touch it. That's, that's awesome that what you're doing. And I know that when you told us your, what you're doing and how you're doing it, I really leaned on Rebecca quite a bit because Rebecca does quite a bit of stuff too, um, as far as helping and supporting people that have gone through traumatic things in their life. Uh, based off of her experiences and what she does to the table. Then as we ping pong back and forth, we knew that this was going to be a, a very important episode for people to get out, see it, but to continue to share it too, because you're doing something that it's not just, hey, this is going to be now. You're doing something that is going to be, not only is it going to be now, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to go for decades and decades after this show is completed airing, this is going to be something that continuously can be shared amongst everyone for decades. So I, I want to thank you for coming on and spending time with us and being able to do this. Um, please give us how folks can find you, um, how they can connect with you, and how they can actually help each other the same way through what you're bringing to the table. Sure, thank you. 
Thank you. First of all, I would like to say thank you so much for having me here and to be able to share my story. Um, I can be reached at uh, www.shevetsit.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram. Uh, we have an Instagram site. You can um, DM me there. We have a Facebook site. We also have a meetup group in Texas, D.C., uh, Florida, Arizona, and California. So we also have a meetup group, which is actually listed on Facebook, and you can connect with veterans that are within that area. And so definitely reach out. And if there's any anything that you um, need, I'm always open to share resources. That's how I started was just sharing resources on Instagram of programs that are helpful for um, veterans, not necessarily just women veterans, but veterans. So for four years, I was posting uh, programs, veteran programs that were helpful. So we're not just a meetup group and we're not just on Clubhouse, but we're also, I'm also behind the scenes like last, a couple of weeks ago, someone knew a woman veteran that was uh, homeless. And so we, I connected them with someone that's in Florida that was able to get them help. So we also connect resources. We bridge the gap um, for women veterans or just veterans in period and just letting them know, look, this is, these are resources that are available. And even groups or organizations like yourself and other, uh, any organization that help veterans, we try to keep a list of those organizations that we can send, re sit, refer them to. So thank you again for having me here. Awesome. And can you tell us a little bit about what are your, what's some of the stuff that's coming in the future? Like, where do you truly want to take what you're doing? Wow. You know, I, like, I really feel like right now, I'm, I'm, this is everything that's happened to this point, having a TBI and even all the, the jobs that I've had connecting people in the past has led me to this purpose of She Vets It. And so I think at some point, um, probably becoming a nonprofit, uh, that's what it's leading to. And I have a lot of individuals that tell me, Althea, this needs to be a nonprofit because you do a lot. This is like a full-time job. So you need to, you know, possibly turn it into a nonprofit. So I'm really, um, really, really looking at that point. Right now I have like probably maybe 10, probably more than 10 women that are all over the United States that have been helping me and supporting me because on Clubhouse, we have rooms like this morning at eight, eight o'clock, I have a, a registered yoga and meditation uh, teacher and she does meditation for me on my wellness Wednesdays on Clubhouse. And so she just did, she did one of those rooms and I have different women or uh, speakers that do different things on of the week for me. So it, I, I definitely, I have a program. So I'm very intentional on Clubhouse on the type of rooms that I provide. It's not just a room where we meet up. I think of rooms that would be helpful for, uh, for veterans. And so hopefully those programs, I can move into a nonprofit space and even move on beyond that. So we'll see, because I, I just feel like this is my calling. And at first I was in that dark space where I didn't understand why things were happening, but I think it all is working for my good to lead up to the purpose that I've been called to do. And that is to work and support uh, women veterans to help uh, find a safe space for them to converse, um, com uh, connect and collaborate and to inspire one each other. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on today. And uh, Rebecca, I'll, I'll turn it over to you, let you close the show out. But uh, really good to have you on, uh, Dr. Althea Williams. But yeah, yeah, that didn't get mentioned, did it? Oh, wow. You know what? That was actually one of my goals uh, is to get my PhD. But I, I said I needed to, um, I'm still in the recovery stage and, and, and trying to take it slow and how much I'm able to do with 
with my, I call my different ability, not disability, but my different ability. And I'm just trying to test out and see what I'm able to, uh, to do. And maybe in the future, I'll definitely do that. Well, I want to thank you for taking all of the things that have been such a challenge for you and turning them into something that can help others with challenges and move them in a direction that's going to be a lot healthier and happier for them. This is really exciting. And thank you for taking the time out of your day to be with us to right now. Well, thank you. I, like I said, I appreciate you, you two and your staff, like I said, to share stories for, of veterans because a lot of stories we may hear of like the prominent ones, the ones, the first this or the first, but you never hear a lot of the stories of the common veterans that are out there. And a lot of our stories don't get told. So I do admire and what you, you both are doing, what your staff is doing. Thank you so much for archiving um, each and every one of our experiences. You, you two and your staff are appreciated. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we want to thank all of you for tuning in to another episode of At TVO Campfire. We are so excited to embrace veterans and their stories and share them with you so that it can actually make a whole lot of difference in your life and maybe someone that you know. So go ahead and connect with us and the guests that are on here. Take those, those episodes that you see and spread them all over social media. We really appreciate that you do. And so do the guests that are here. Thanks for tuning in. Well, we're veterans, so we spend a lot of time in mental health. Um, <laughs> Thanks for telling me. That's us. part of it, right? And uh, so, and we also teach a class called, uh, now it's called Rec for Heroes. It's a guitar class at the VA, uh, Fort Worth VA. And I've been teaching now for now five years, and, and Ron has been helping me teach the disabled vets up there. And um, so I said, I got to thinking, you know what? The song is essentially three minutes with your therapist, right? I mean, it can make you up, make you down, whatever. So I uh, wrote a little bit about it, and Ron is like, yeah, let's finish that sucker. Yeah, so we sit down and it's called three minutes. Of, and we finished it in a thunderstorm. Yeah, that's so. right. Give me a three-minute session with my favorite Haggard song. Warm summer evening and the rumble of a storm. Find my direction, way to heal my wrongs. With a three-minute session in the form of a country song.
warm summer evening and the rumble of a storm. Find my direction, way to heal my wrongs. With a three minute session in the form of a country song. With a three-minute session in the form of a country song.